So we are going to talk about how to deal with repeated roots in homogeneous differential equations. And to start out, let's consider the equation y double prime minus 4y prime plus 4y equals 0. We know in order to solve this equation, we want to guess that the solution is y equals e to the rt, and then solve for r. We know that y, the kth derivative, is going to be r to the k times e to the rt. So if we plug that in here to get our characteristic equation, y double prime, the second derivative, will become r squared. y prime will just become an r, and then y will not have any r's at all, and that equals 0. If we want to factor this to solve for r, we know that we'll get r minus 2 squared equals 0, which gives us the solution r equals 2. And this 2 is going to be a double root. So the question is, we know one of our solutions is going to be e to the 2t. But normally, when we have a second order differential equation, we want to have two solutions at the end. So where did the second one go? In this case, it seems like we don't really have any way to get to a second solution. I'm going to propose that the second solution to our differential equation is t e to the 2t. And to verify that this is true, let's take the first and second derivative and plug it in to see what we get. Well, we know y2 prime is going to be, by the product rule, first we have t, and then the derivative of e to the 2t is 2e to the 2t. Then if we do e to the 2t, and then the derivative of t is 1. The second derivative, y2 double prime, we do the product rule over here again. We're going to get t times, and then the derivative of this is 4e to the 2t. And then plus, if we differentiate t here, we'll get 2e to the 2t times 1. And then plus, the derivative of this is again 2e to the 2t. So over here, we have 2e to the 2t and then another 2e to the 2t. If we add those together, this is going to become a 4e to the 2t. Now we have both of our derivatives and we can plug them in. But before we do that, I'm going to make an observation. Because we have this t here out in front, if we look at the derivatives here, we have t e to the 2t. And then the first derivative is, has t times 2e to the 2t. And then the second derivative here has t times 4e to the 2t. All of these things in here match up with the derivatives of the original function, our first solution. And therefore, we know that if we plug all of these into the differential equation, we're going to get t times something that we know adds to 0, since it's a solution. And 0 times t equals 0 as well which means that we are able to completely ignore this first part. We can just focus on this over here. So let's think about what happens when we plug this section in to our differential equation. y double prime is going to be 4e to the 2t. And then minus 4 times y prime is e to the 2t. And then we don't have anything left for our y, so that's just plus 0 equals 0. And we can see very clearly in this case these two are going to cancel out, and we get 0 equals 0, meaning that this is actually a solution to our differential equation. So anytime you have a double root in your characteristic polynomial, you get r equals 2 and 2, something like that. Your first solution is going to be what you expect, e to the 2t. Your second solution will be the same, but with a t multiplied on the left just like that. Now, if you have a triple root or a quadruple root, you're going to keep increasing this power of t. So say we had r minus 2 cubed over here, and then we had a triple root. Our third solution will be y3 equals t squared e to the 2t, just like that. And then if you wanted to find your solution in a general form, it would look like this. You get y equals c1 plus c2t plus c3t squared e to the 2t. And that's going to be what your solution looks like anytime you get a repeated root.